Hey everyone, how's it going? Welcome back to Let's Play Neo 2. Today we have a great level ahead of us. ここにあなたが来るって天界が教えてくれたわ。あなたがいない間、陶吉郎の動きを探ってた。相変わらず陶吉郎は好き放題で、民を泣かしてばかり。異球も嘆いてたわ。無理難題ばかり押し付けられる
Uh, we can come back in this room and suddenly this is all accessible to us. And when you drop down one level further, we come to a dark realm and immediately a precarious position on the rafters. So we're going to clear this side out first, and that's just going to give us a chance to compose ourselves and to be ready for what's coming. Also, there is a follow-up attack to that spin uh, that triggers right when you uh, you run an enemy out of stamina. Uh, I just mistimed it there, so we didn't get to see it. But we'll get plenty of opportunities to check that out. Uh, now there's... Oh, hello. You're not dead. The Dweller's not dead. He's truly alive. He's living on the inside, roaring like a lion. I hate that that song is so catchy. It's a bad song. But damn. <laughs> uh, and this, now that everything's cleared, is going to give us the perfect chance to just plunge right down on the ice pops. And we use the Yatsu no Kami right when we land, just to cancel any kind of uh, recovery frames from landing, so we can't get punched and killed before even getting a chance to recover. Now that we've fallen all the way down here, we can actually start to climb back up. This is one of my favorite things about the level, it's just how vertical it is. Really breaks from uh, a lot of the, the traditional style of level design that we have been experiencing for the past few missions. A lot of the early missions uh, are pretty vertical as well. This one puts all of them to shame. Now note we've climbed multiple ladders back up, so consider what level we're on of, of this uh, mission. Like, what level we're on on the floor? We're throwing spinning shit now? Ooh, even the Tengu's spinning. Everybody spins. Oh yeah, he has that burst move where he does four spins, too. I don't think we have uh, a skeleton warrior to get his axe in. Oh god, he's on fire. And now we can really lay in. Should be able to finish it right here. So now we can open up this door, and that is the shortcut back to the room with the pit that we fell down in the first place after we lowered the water level. And from here, we grab the chest, and then it's all the way back down and descending even further so we can get to the next dragon statue. I like the kind of... It's not really a puzzle, but it's like a puzzle in the Resident Evil sense of the word. These sort of mini objectives that take a little bit of thought as to where to go and what to do with them. Or at least where to find the gems that correspond to the statues that we have to place them in. It gives you a little objective hunt beyond just make it to the end of the level. It's make it to the end of the level by doing this thing and scouring the level for things. It gets you more engaged with it. Uh, now over here, we're going to take an alternate path instead of that winding ramp by going past the Nurakabe. Uh, please don't crush me. Fuh okay, well. That's not bad. As long as I'm not in a long uh, gesture animation when the Nurakabe becomes hostile, resulting in me getting crushed before getting a chance to dodge, everything's fine. Because some of those animations are much longer than others. Also, we've now located the second uh, dragon statue, and right around the corner for it, from it, up this ladder is the crystal with a jewel. Uh, first, we have to deal with a snake. We're just gonna draw her out, pull her away from that, so we have a better spot to fight her in. I do have my antidote map, but it's on the fourth hotbar. 
Now she will heal a little bit over time uh, while the crystal remains active, but you can see, ooh, okay. Uh, this is still not gonna be, oh, it took so long that she didn't even start up the grab animation. She just went into a different attack. I never see that happen. Uh, that's the only downside to electrocuting enemies is they they slow down completely and that includes all of their burst attacks so it can throw your timing off also this is cool as hell this is one of my this is why this is one of my favorite levels and then you get all this stuff down below revealed too so just like the hanging upside down architecture. Ah! And all the water. Jesus, what a cool level. Now, we have to be a little careful because just through that door, might not see it initially and just rush past the threshold. There's a Namahage right there. Ooh, none of these are hitting the horn. I need to back up a little bit. There we go. Now we're fine. I was a little worried when he threw that first hatchet at me, or that first blade. Okay, so we can just drop down onto the second uh, bridge beneath the first. And now we can't go any further down until we get the next statue, or the next jewel. Now, this is another really tricky one, because if you don't look from the other room, you might not know that the Snake Woman is there. Aw, oh, damn it. Come on. That's an okay trade to make. I just have to be careful about whether or not I make another one. Oh, the things we do to rescue the precious little buddies that are the Kodama. Now, before I step onto this enormous, obvious combat arena, uh, let's take a look around. There's a giant dweller. There's one up there who tosses firebombs at you, and then there's this other small one who we can clean up before engaging the big one. Normally, I wouldn't even bother sniping the firebomb one. I would just run around. Uh, the problem is, he's standing right near the ladder, and as soon as you are within range climbing the ladder, he swings at you before you can do anything. <laughs> it's really obnoxious. You can bait it out, but I'd rather shoot him in the head, like Makoto Shishio. God, this level, it, it's just sprawling. It's so good. It's not too hard to navigate. Uh, there is one part near the end, I'll tell you when it's coming up, uh, that I got lost in for a hot minute when I first played this. Because I had no idea what to do. And it's after you place the final jewel in the final statue. Uh, but now we know where the next statue is and where the next jewel is, being ar uh, guarded by the Ice Clops. Come on down here. Uh, that top talisman that I just threw out to debuff him is a weakness talisman. It lowers his defense. It's something else I picked up from the Omnio Magic Tree uh, recently. And we're going to let him throw this rock. That's going to be a kill. Two, spinning shit, follow up. That's what you get for the level two version of that skill. Uh, is that follow up. Now, let's further lower the water level. Revealing even more of the level. We've now gone so far underground. <laughs> Thank you. 
We are so many stories beneath where we started. And we're only going to keep dropping and revealing more of this ancient palace. Oh, hello. It's just a dweller. You have to be careful with some of the corners in here. There are a lot of really dangerous enemies that are placed in spots that are just obnoxious. Oh, like the Namahaga here. Uh, who is... Uh -oh. oh, it's just the one sweep. I still don't know all the Namahage's uh, burst attacks by heart. I'm not going to take a risk here. I was feeling a little bit under pressure with where that fight was going. Got a little nervous, not gonna lie. Uh-oh. Uh Maybe got a little bit too comfortable too quick towards the end of that fight. Okay, we purified the Dark Realm, which means we can now explore this uh, lower floor at our leisure. Oh, and grab another Kodama that I almost forgot was back here. So now what we're actually looking for is this switch to rotate the bridge. And that's not the only thing that that switch rotates. This is actually around where I got incredibly, incredibly lost uh, the first time that I did this. And there's no guarantee that I'm not gonna fumble that one a little bit again. Oh, come on. Just expose your courser. Don't make me use even more magic. I only have the two thunder shots left, and then I think I still have the eight fire shot talismans map to the third hot bar. Oh, you're going in. You're going in and getting wrung out. Damn, Neo is so in love with Soul Calibur. <laughs> this really should be... Oh, they should let Team Ninja do all the Soul Calibur campaigns from now on and just do them in the style of Neo. Get that Koei Namco partnership going. That would be so sick. Okay, this one, there are three enemies to worry about. Uh, so rather than fight on this small platform where it's really easy to backstep or roll into the water, let's take care of the crowd control up front. It's you. That almost got scary for a second. Can we push her in? Oh, no. This one's a little bit more robust, a little bit harder to push. We can maybe do it, though. Come on. Nah, it's not going to happen. She doesn't want to. She does not want to swim. Come on. Now, nah, you have to do something like uh, uh, push them to the edge with a burst counter. Like we did with that Tengu a while back. <laughs> What a fun game. <laughs> uh, but also... Okay, it's the... Ram? Wait, this doesn't feel right. Oh, shit. <laughs> I don't think I needed to do this at all for any reason. No, in fact, I could have come here before. I could have gone the other way around to do all that. Oh, yeah, that's why this is here. I told you it might happen. That I might still lose my bearings a little bit. If this is the most lost I get in this level, though, I feel like I'm doing pretty well. So now, this again. Uh, oh, we're following this over to the right. Now, I think we might be done with the statues. We just have to go back up now. Yeah, this makes sense. 
This is a Tengu, I want to say? Yeah. Uh, so we're going to be a little bit careful here, because again, I get very nervous and lose my composure whenever falling off a cliff is uh, a possibility. God, that's a really fun yokai move. That's the Magatsu Warriors Soul Core, by the way. It's all projectile based, and a lot of them at that. And quite strong. And like a lot of the other uh, Soul Cores that I value, Yokai abilities that I like, that one starts up really quick. Like, there are so many more uh, Soul Cores that I would use if they didn't take so long to cast. The Kuroka is a great example of that. Uh, the one that does all of the homing fireballs, but you have to take like several seconds setting them all up first. And it's hard to do that reactively. You could start a fight that way and it's fine. Or sometimes if you have a long enough opening on a boss, it can work out, but it's a little bit dicey. And this is why I got lost before, because I was still looking for dragon jewels and dragon statues instead of realizing, oh, this entire other side of the shrine has now opened up after I hit that switch down below. So I never came back up to the to the uh, to the shrine down here to check around. I was just looking for like, what are the paths that I can possibly take to get to another shrine? I'm already as low as I can go. How do I lower the water level further? But we have now made it to a boss that I love. Oh, I love shooting Doji. The back end of this game is loaded with my favorite fights, and he is way up there. We're throwing spinning shit now? He's like an even more fun version of Nautaka, uh, the boss who looked like Shadow Jago with a giant Odachi. That was a little brainless of me. Uh, yeah, he is a much cooler arena, and when he smashes the crystals, it fills his gourd up, and after enough time, he can drink it to force a Dark Realm transition. Oh, this time he left like I was hoping he would. Oh, yeah! Dude, the spacing on this fight feels immaculate. It's so fun. Like, look at that. That's great. I want to smash his gourd and see the crystals on it. Oh, okay. So, out of his three burst attacks, that grab is the scary one. Uh, the timing, as you can see, is really delayed. And then once the attack starts, it's so fast that it becomes hard to react to. So you just have to know the timing hold or dodge to the left or right. Uh, because if it hits you, I'm not even joking, it's a one-hit kill from full health. Uh, and then some overkill on top of that. Gotta smash the board again. There. And now we can bully him. 
Uh, the great thing about Shuten Doji is you can get some really big combos off on him, so it feels like this nice reward for how much you have to ride the Razor's Edge dodging him. And this is the easy burst attack. Easiest one in the game. Also, I hope we get to see the cool thing that happens in this phase as he's drunkenly spinning around. God, he's so cool! And that flaming hair attack looks great. And it feels really fun to space that out just perfectly. It's so fun when you're just dodging this 10 foot long club inches from your face. It's such a good thrill. We might not see the thing, which would be unfortunate. Oh, wow, that almost caught me. Come on, my dude. Might have to force it out of him. I think maybe if we circle him? Yeah, okay. He drunkenly swings the thing around so much that he falls over and gives you a free, uh, a free critical hit. I can't believe I got both of those. Two in one fight is terrifying. Oh, that's, that's way up there in terms of like the best fights in the game. I enjoy that immensely. And the arena is so cool. He swings to kill, too. All of his attacks will either one or two shot you. And yet, and yet, my favorite boss in the game, in the base game, is still to come. Oh, hey, it's the Seven Branch Sword again. キロを推理All right, that's going to do it for now. We only have a few missions left in the game, and it is all gas, no breaks from here on out. Thank you all for watching. Take it easy. Have a good one, y'all.